Next up is Barry Kernfeld. He is editor-in-chief of uh, the New Grove Dictionary of Jazz and author of three monographs, What to Listen for in Jazz, The Story of Fake Books, and Pop Song uh, piracy. In 2005, he started a second career taking a half-time position as staff archivist in the historical collections and labor archives within the Special Collections Library at Penn State. He is also active as a clarinetist and saxophonist in State College, Pennsylvania, mainly in musical theater as opportunities to play jazz locally have declined in recent years. Very. Set me up here? Sure. No problem. Which of these was your show? Uh, this one? That one. Okay. Jack Rabin spent the final portion of his career as a professor at the Harrisburg campus of the Pennsylvania State University. This is why I will be talking about an Alabama civil rights uh, collection housed at our special collections library at Penn State. In the 1970s, Rabin was teaching public administration in Montgomery. Here he is with uh, the activist E.D. Nixon. Uh, somehow, the details are unknown. One of his students was working for the Department of Public Safety and got wind of the fact that materials from the subversive unit of the Investigative and, I and Identification Division of the Alabama Department of Public Safety were going to be destroyed. Somehow, Rabin rescued a cache of newspaper clippings, photos, and reel-to-reel -reel tapes. The clippings file compiled by the subversive unit gives a snapshot of the times, drawn mainly from local papers. My favorite is from a man who reported that every time the Soviet satellite Sputnik went by, his electric garage door went up and down. <laughs> I mention this not only because it captures the hysteria of the times, but also because it serves as a reminder that the subversive unit was preoccupied with both, with both communists and civil rights and often made no distinction between the two. Black equals red. Among the photos are about 360 previously unknown black and white prints documenting events in Selma and Montgomery in the weeks preceding the Selma to Montgomery March. There are also several dozen prints from lunch counter sit-ins, including a sit-in at the Montgomery Courthouse that led to a landmark decision on students' rights after the protesters were summarily expelled from college. These are a few excerpts from the Selma to Montgomery March photos. The tapes capture a meeting of the Montgomery Improvement Association, two hours of speeches given on the steps of the Capitol at the conclusion of the Selma to Montgomery March, and speeches given a few weeks uh, prior to King's assassination by Martin Luther King, Albert, uh, Ralph Abernathy, and others during the uh, Poor People's Campaign in 1968. I'm going to play some excerpts from that, but before I do that, uh, I thought you might be curious to see my uh, primitive paper and scotch tape method. When we received these uh, five-inch reels, uh, it was impossible to tell from 
the annotations on the box, how they related to one another. And in the end, the only way to do it was to transcribe the tapes, lay them out on the table, and scotch tape them together to see how overlapping portions lined up. And you'll see about a third of the way down through this event, there's four uh, lines going straight across. So at some point, uh, uh, there were four tape recorders running simultaneously. The setup, as I understand it, you've got the capital there in the center on the far right. Uh, down at the bottom is the state of Alabama Public Safety Building. And on top of that, uh, oh, where's my, whoops, sorry. Okay, there's the Capitol. There's the public safety building, and on top of that, uh, Captain Willie Foster of the surve surveillance, subversive unit, sorry, had set up his tape recorders and recorded these. Uh, what I'm focusing on today is the Poor People's Campaign. Uh, giving you the flavor of the Rabin Collection tapes by playing two excerpts, a portion of Martin Luther King's introduction and then a portion of Ralph Abernathy's speech. But since we're, we are a gathering of people devoted to recorded sound, I thought that I should first mention a recorded peculi peculiarity that I encountered in attempting to deal with, with these tapes. Another surveillance tape from the Poor People's Campaign holds a recording of an unidentified man speaking in March 1968 in Birmingham on the topic of civil rights and the Vietnam War. We all know that the standard inches per second reel-to-reel -reel speeds are multiples of one another, one and seven eighths, three and three quarters, seven and a half, 15, 30. This tape runs at about two and two thirds inches per second. I have used cheap machines that run at say seven and a quarter instead of seven and a half. In a similar vein, high quality tape recorders allow variable speed control, so pitch may be adjusted if necessary. But that variable speed operates within a very limited range. I have never worked with a machine that would allow extreme variability. In any event, this recording sounds like it was made on the street, and so it almost certainly involved a no-frills, portable reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. I thought that for a moment, well, maybe the battery was running down, but from my experience, a weak battery always causes the pitch to wobble up and down. This recording runs steadily. I've never before encountered a tape that runs steadily at a speed roughly halfway between the standard speeds. If one of you excerpts has the answer, I'd be curious to know it. Just a minor little public. Well, I'm just wondering how it happened. He says it's steady, but sitting between the normal speed divisions. So that it's like five inches per second instead of, but steady there. Yeah, yeah but it will be nearer. And right. I record it slowly to play back fast. Right. Cool. In any event, I'd like to now play two excerpts uh, from the Poor People's Campaign. As I said, this was a few weeks before King was assassinated. It's uh, difficult to hear. Again, it's a situation where the p police brought in a portable tape recorder and they're at a, quite a distance from where he's actually speaking. It's genuine low fidelity. If you hear words that I missed, if you correct words that I got wrong, I would be happy to have an improved transcript. Here's Martin Luther King's introduction. Well, I'm 
Negro men. And women, we start to kill that kid. The yeah. 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 And that kid. Is there anything that would lead you to believe that those tapes that you just referred to were made over a phone line and uh, not at the site? Not that I know of. It's as there was there was an article in the New York Times about this uh, subversive unit of the uh, investigative and identification division. Um, and that's all that I have found about this. Uh, it seemed that they went to places. That the, the reason I ask is that odd tapes, what was that odd tape speed you were talking about? Well, no, that doesn't pertain to this one oh, okay. at all. No, these run fine. All right. These the, are all fine. The odd tape speed, I believe, may be from a dictaphone court reporter's backup tape. Well, that's interesting. So it may have been from out of the window. Dictaphone, court, you, you, you're familiar with a court reporter's hand uh, type machine that's used to, to take mm -hmm. a, a tape in a courtroom. Dictaphone used, uh, some, some models of dictaphone used backup tapes so that the court reporter could then go back and make reference if the tape was incomplete or there was an error. Dictaphone used odd speeds so that you could not play the tape on a regular tape recorder. You had to buy Dictaphone's own court reporter equipment to play back the tape. And it's possible that somebody was actually, that would suggest that they had somebody transcribing it on a Dictaphone machine and taking a tape at the same time, and then the the tape uh, got lost, and all that was left was the the backup tape. Thank you. You definitely win the prize for the best explanation anyone's ever given when I've asked about this. That's wonderful. Anyone else? All right. Thank you. <laughs> 